Good evening and welcome to the May 15, 2013 Town Board meeting. And uh, tonight we have a, a very large crowd, uh, which is fantastic. It's always nice to look out and uh, see a group of folks uh, looking back. Uh, we have a lot of items on the agenda tonight. I'm going to try to get everyone in in a very timely fashion and uh, try to make your stay as pleasant as possible. And with that, I would ask everyone to please rise. I'm going to call on the Penfield Volunteer Emergency Ambulance and uh, Charlie Collier and his team uh, to lead us in the pledge tonight. much. I would ask our clerk uh, if she would please call the roll. Cole? Here. LaFountain? Here. Metzler? Here. Moore? Here. Quinn? Here. Okay, we have three public hearings tonight, and before we get into the public hearings, I'm going to take care of a, a couple of other small pieces of uh, business. Um, uh, this, uh, this week uh, is EMS week, and uh, we've got a couple of rigs uh, that are uh, stationed out here, and we've got a number of folks that uh, at any moment could be toned out uh, to the next uh, incident. Uh, and uh, so in uh, that interest, I would like to call on Rob Quinn, Councilman Rob Quinn, if uh, he would just take that next segment, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, actually, I'm going to start this evening on a, on a bittersweet note, but uh, earlier this week, one of our charter members, uh, Malcolm Bunk Bill, passed away, and I think it's fitting, a fitting tribute if Tom Tracy could join me at the podium for a moment and read, uh, well, I'll let, I'll let Tom sort of set it up, but read something uh, for Bunk's memory. Traditionally in public safety, somebody that has either passed away in the line of duty or who has given a tremendous amount of service to public safety when they pass away is honored with what is called a last call, which is broadcast by the 911 dispatcher on the appropriate channel for the agency in which he or she served. So this afternoon at 10 minutes after 12, it was my honor to present the last call for Mr. Bill. When on the air with the last call for Penfield Volunteer Ambulance Charter member Malcolm Bill, more affectionately known by family and friends as Bunk. The year was 1966 when Mr. Bill led a group of Penfield residents to form a volunteer emergency ambulance service. He would go on to dedicate the next 47 years of his life as an active member, staffing the ambulance on a regular basis until he was well into his 80s. Not one to rest, when he could no longer staff the ambulance, Mr. Bill continued his service in countless other ways, even mowing the lawn at PVEA until he was 96. Malcolm Bill was a true pioneer of the local EMS system. He was one of the first New York State EMTs in our area. He also worked tirelessly to recruit and train others, a true example of service above self. Rest in peace, Bunk. Thank you, Tom. In honor of Mr. Bill, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for a moment of silence. Thank you. Also, this coming week is Emergency Medical Services Week between May 19th and May 25th, and this is always a a great opportunity to recognize our local volunteers. Uh, the Penfield Ambulance is gracious to be here tonight, uh, an organization that is always near and dear to my heart. Uh, but tonight, besides Tom, his son Stephen is here, uh, David Gully, Brian Annabelle, Margaret, uh, I'm blanking, blanked and I, <laughs> I'm looking right at you. <laughs> I've known Margaret the longest. <laughs> Uh, Dan Reardon, President Charlie Clear, and I see, I see his wife Helena also in the back. But Penfield volunteers at the Ambulance Corps volunteer about 2,000 hours a month, which is necessary because Penfield Ambulance usually answers 250 
calls a month. In recent years, we've increased our call coverage and we're now answering about 90% of calls, which is remarkable for a volunteer corps. As I mentioned at our previous meeting in April, in April we had 93% call coverage, which is our record since we've been keeping uh, track of calls. And also, in May alone, we had eight new recruits come forward and want to volunteer. I think that speaks very highly of uh, volunteering and public service as well as uh, the recruiting and the leadership and the guidance that is offered at Penfield Ambulance. So I'm going to ask Charlie to join me at the podium. This is a proclamation honoring May 19th through 25th, 2013 as Emergency Medical Services Week. Whereas Emergency Medical Services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of Emergency Medical Services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. And whereas members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas Penfield Volunteer Emergency Ambulance, or PVEA, has heroically lived up to its promise to provide emergency medical service to the people of Penfield. And whereas more than 100 local men and women currently volunteer their time, training, and vigilance as PVEA members to protect the lives of their neighbors. And whereas the same number of community activists entirely responded to more than 3,000 calls of their time to helping their neighbors last year. And whereas since it was founded in 1968, PVEA volunteers have dedicated more than 1.6 million hours of time. Whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week. Now therefore, the Penfield Town Board, in recognition of this event, does hereby proclaim the week of May 19 through 25, 2013 as Emergency Medical Services Week with the theme EMS, more than a job, a calling. We encourage the community to observe this week with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. Be it further resolved that the town board encourages, thanks, and admires all the residents who choose to serve the community as a volunteer emergency medical service provider. And this proclamation is dated today, May 15th, 2013, and is signed by Supervisor Tony LaFountain and the members of the town board. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> On behalf of the Corps, I'd like to thank Rob, Supervisor LaFountain, the Town Board for this recognition. Um, it has been a tough week, but we will keep on trying to uh, follow the lead the bunk bill has set. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Charlie. And uh, <laughs> thank you uh, to all the members that are uh, here tonight uh, and all the members that uh, are behind the scenes uh, out supporting Penfield uh, each and every day. I'll, I'll tell you that uh, I had an opportunity uh, to use uh, the Penfield uh, uh, Volunteer Emergency Ambulance uh, Corps within the last four months for a family member. And uh, I have to say that uh, as I saw them coming around the corner and uh, I saw them uh, getting out and uh, provided uh, the needed care uh, for that family member, uh, it, I was just uh, absolutely uh, breathless and, and speechless uh, because uh, uh, what you do, uh, how well you do it, uh, the care, the compassion uh, is uh, second to none. And uh, so I had an opportunity to see it firsthand very recently, and I want to say thank you to all of you and uh, all of your mem members. Thank you very much. We know that uh, these meetings are always very stimulating and uh, exciting, and uh, so uh, you're welcome to stay as long as you like, uh, but if uh, you have to get back to the base and back into service, we understand that as well. And again, uh, thank you for your time and uh, thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Thank you.
the, uh, the next item uh, that I'd like to uh, speak about is uh, an upcoming golf tournament uh, that is going to be held in July. Uh, so this is organized by our Penfield Business Association. Um, it is uh, sponsored by Family First and uh, it goes to a great uh, cause which is the Shepherd Home Comfort Care Facility that we have here in Penfield that uh, truly is a jewel uh, within uh, our community. And um, I, I, I will say that I've had an opportunity to play in the tournament a couple of times, not well, uh, but I have played in the uh, tournament a couple of times and I'm looking forward to uh, this coming July uh, to play again. Uh, with, a, with a very interesting team, and I'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, tonight, uh, uh, we have the Vice President of the Penfield Business Association, uh, Jeff Chapman. Uh, from uh, Family First, uh, we have Kate Hayward, uh, who is the Business Development uh, uh, Director, and we have Marie Sinti, and uh, for those that uh, don't know Marie, uh, Marie is uh, every place and involved in so many things and uh, does such a great job of uh, support and volunteerism uh, within uh, Penfield. And uh, so at this time, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Chapman to, uh, to come up and uh, uh, take us uh, through. And it looks like he's going to have uh, Kate and uh, Marie to join him. OK, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a hat trick, and uh, that's always a very good thing. So. For more. Good evening. Thank you, Tony, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, we as an organization appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to tell the town board audience members, PCTV, about the third annual PBA golf tournament to benefit the Shepherd Home on Monday, July 15th at Penfield Country Club. This year promises to be our best year as we plan to meet our goal of raising at least $10,000 for the Shepherd Home. Our hardworking committee of volunteers is put, putting together prize packages for both men's and women's categories this year. So tell all the women golfers you know to sign up. We are also offering an, an early bird discount to those registering before June 10th at $135 per golfer versus after that at $150 per golfer. I would also like to take the time to introduce Kate Haywood from Family First Federal Credit Union. Family First is once again the lead sponsor for this event as they have been for the previous two years. We simply couldn't do it without them. In addition to financial support, they have also made their marketing team available to help produce flyers, brochures, mail out letters, and many other promotional tasks that would otherwise tap into the funds that we are able to raise for the Shepherd Home. Thank you. Kate? Thanks, Jeff. Sure. Um, well, it's our pleasure at Family First to again be the lead sponsor. And um, one of our philosophies that we were founded on is that um, we believe in service to our community. And we take that commitment extremely seriously at Family First. And so sponsoring this event helps us give back to the community that we serve and also gives our staff a chance to meet our membership and the community on a more personal level rather than just at the credit union. And not only do we sponsor the tournament or the tournament with our money, um, but we also give our time. And so uh, there you will see Family First employees helping with activities throughout the day, such as registration, um, selling raffle tickets, giving out snacks and water on the course, and helping to set up and arrange all the great raffle and auction items that the committee gathers to give out to the golfers and the guests who participate. And um, Jeff, I understand that there's still room for sponsorship. Um, we are looking for a dinner sponsor and several tea and flag sponsors as well. And these are really great opportunities for you or your business to raise awareness within the community. Um, and it's a very popular and very well attended event here in Penfield. And in addition to your sponsorship, you can also donate gift items such as gift certificates, um, prize baskets, unique gifts such as getaway weekends or event tickets, or you can even donate small items for the golf bags um, and beverages and snacks for the day. So no gift is too small. And we are just, again, so proud at Family First to sponsor the PBA golf tournament. And um, it's mostly because we really value our commitment to service in the community. But Shepherd Home is such a great cause, um, just in it's such a great cause. And there's such an impact that Shepherd Home makes on the community. And now I would like to introduce Marie Sinti, who is a volunteer from the Shepherd Home. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, on behalf of Shepherd Home, we appreciate your support so much. I've been a volunteer at Shepherd Home for about five years now, and I know I could tell you lots of stories about what a just a wonderful, special place that it is. 
Um, for those of you who don't know, Shepherd Home is a comfort care home that serves the terminally ill in their last days and weeks of life. We provide a safe and comfortable environment uh, with 24-hour care. And to do that, we have a roster of over 60 volunteers um, that tend to the needs of the resident and their families. Um, it's a special place that provides its services at no cost. We receive no insurance reimbursement or government funding of any kind. So how we exist is through donations and community fundraisers such as the golf tournament. We are so pleased to be the recipient of the PBA golf tournament funds for a third year in a row. Your support and the support of Family First Credit Union, the Penfield Business Association, and the many other supporting sponsors and golfers is sincerely appreciated. You can also help the Ministry of Shepherd Home as well. Um, please consider gathering a group of friends and golfing. If you're not a golfer, we have a dinner only option, so you can um, come for dinner only. Um, it's a fun day. Again, as Kate mentioned, there are lots of great prizes. There will be an auction, a Chinese style auction, pick a prize, and also a live auction for some of the more um, larger ticket items. There will be registration and sponsorship brochures. We'll put them over on the table there, and please pick one up if you're interested. You may also register online at penfieldbusiness.org, or you can download a registration form from the website and mail it in with your check. If you have any questions, you can reach us at info at penfieldbusiness.org, or you can leave a voicemail at 585-348-8360. Should I repeat that? <laughs> Um, it's 585-348-8360, and we'll return your call. On behalf of Jeff and Kate and myself, we would like to thank the town of Penfield for giving us the opportunity to address the board and the members of the Penfield community, both here in the audience and those watching from home. We look forward to seeing everyone on Monday, July 15th at Penfield Country Club. So good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, uh, Jeff, thank you. Uh, as always, um, you know, the Shepherd Home is uh, one of the jewels that we have in this community, and uh, they have done so much uh, for many families uh, within this community and, and, and adjacent communities. And uh, I can continue to be amazed every time uh, that I get involved with some event uh, with a Shepherd Home, uh, the, the caring volunteers, uh, the board of directors, uh, and the director of the facility uh, are just uh, fantastic folks, and uh, we, we thank you for everything that you do for the community. So, And uh, Mr. Chapman, you're in charge of weather, so I expect the 15th will be a bright and beautiful Not day. Oh, All right. No. All right. <laughs> we'll, make it, uh, we'll make it work. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving right along, uh, I see uh, a couple of members uh, from uh, the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf. And uh, Kathy Cummings, um, and I think uh, Fran Cardella is uh, with uh, Kathy. And Kathy, if uh, you would like to take just a minute and uh, talk a little bit about another one of our jewels that we have within the Pen Penfield community that does so much. And I think uh, our friend uh, Marie Sinti also has a little involvement with. Just, just a little. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting us to speak tonight. I'm Kathy Cummins, one of the founders of the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf, and I'm joined by Fran Cardella, as Tony mentioned, one of our board members. I would like to give you an update as to what's been going on with the food shelf. Established in 97, we're in our 16th year of service to the residents of Penfield. This past year has been really exciting for us. Uh, we moved from our longtime home at the Baptist Church to our new, new location on Jackson Road, and we want to thank the Baptist Church for hosting us for 15 years and to you for uh, supporting our mission through the use of the Jackson Road location. We also celebrated the retirement of two of our founding members, Ted O'Brien and Joe Gersitz. These men had the vision and dedication to grow the food shelf from a simple idea to now a well-oiled machine. The food shelf currently serves about 75 uh, individuals and families on a weekly basis, Penfield residents, and we also uh, provide staples to dozens of families each month. We currently boast a full team of volunteers from picking up perishable foods at Tops and Wegmans to sorting and uh, the donated food, stocking and building shelves. Thank you, Mr. Chapman from the PBA. And even disposing of compost and cardboard on a weekly basis. 
We would like to thank the community for their generosity this past fall. We had an anonymous donor match all non-corporate donations up to $10,000, and we did reach our goal. So now we can continue to serve the emergency food needs of the Penfield residents. I'd like to turn the mic over to Fran now, who can talk to you a little bit uh, about some other changes and what our current needs are. So thank, thank you, you very Kathy. much for your thank support. Thank you, always a pleasure. Fran, welcome. Thank you. I'd like to add my thanks to the board for inviting us tonight. And um, I'd like to invite the town board, as well as the residents, to visit our new website at uh, PenfieldEcumenicalFoodShelf.org. It's a long one, but easy to remember. And also to like us on our Facebook page. Uh, we use those two social media resources for several purposes. Uh, those would include, of course, general contact information, as well as some history of the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf, uh, keeping the community informed of uh, the latest news, but probably the most important of all would be how to both receive and to give help. Speaking of giving help, uh, our website has a wish list of items and we would love to see them donated, so we're hoping some residents can help us out with that wish list. Uh, community members often ask, well, what can I do to help? A wonderful question, we have an answer for that. Uh, our website, uh, uh, we have actually a page de de uh, dedicated to giving help, and when you go there, one of the things that we try to highlight is our Adopt-A-Shelf program. That's our effort to keep our shelves loaded 12 months a year. Basically, the Adopt-A-Shelf program is when a church or a civic group, a family, a group such as perhaps a book club, or maybe a sports team, an office, or sometimes even an individual donates one specific item three or four times a year. Um, it's an easy and perfect way really to help others, especially with the summer months coming when unfortunately we seem to find our shelves the most bare. Uh, speaking of drop-offs, any Wednesday morning from 8 o'clock to 11.30, we would be very happy to take donations at the food shelf. I want to thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to speak to the board. Thank you, thank you very much. Kathy, thank you. I know a number of members um, on uh, this dais uh, are involved with a dish soap. Um, I, I happen to be also in a group with coffee. Uh, so if I get uh, the coffee at the dish soap day and vice versa, hopefully you'll take uh, you'll take that regardless. So all right, very good. Yes, as well. Yes. Jam or jelly, which should not be used as just dish soap. In another organization. But thank you as always. Thanks for the effort. Uh, I know the facility has come a long ways. Uh, you 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 folks have done a great job through uh, some volunteer efforts uh, to really. Uh, spruce up that area that was pretty dreary uh, for a lot of years, so it uh, looks great. The new road is in. Hopefully that's a lot safer for uh, for residents coming in, so uh, that's uh, terrific. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we're continuing to move on, um, and I would like to call on uh, Councilwoman Paula Metzler, and uh, she would uh, uh, talk a little bit about our next uh, item on the agenda, please. One of my roles is as liaison to the Historic Preservation Board here in the town of Penfield. And we have a very active board that hears applications within our Historic Preservation District for uh, different changes to properties, um, um, renovations, and the like. And uh, they're very dedicated to what they do. Um, here is Beverly Vaughn, who's a longtime member of our Historic Preservation Board, as well as Kathy Canal, our town historian, who uh, attends the meetings with me as well. Um, I'm here to present uh, the Jeff Crane Historic Preservation Award. Um, and for those of you who um, are not familiar with this award, the award is given annually in Jeff's name to an individual or individuals who have cared for Penfield's past through the preservation of a structure with historic significance in the town. Recipients are chosen by the Historic Preservation Board based on the significance of their efforts related to historic preservation. The plaque hangs uh, right next to the supervisor's office in the town hall for all to see uh, when they come here. For those of you who do not know Jeff, Cr did not know Jeff Crane, um, his preservation uh, efforts basically went the stretch of uh, stretch of Five Mile Line Road um, and the reconstruction of Five Mile Line Road at the time. Jeff was the proprietor of Mark's Pizzeria. He purchased buildings at 
four or five different locations in Five Mile Line Road, appreciating the historic character of our four corners. He did almost all of the rehab work on the buildings himself. Most notably, he repaired the bell tower at 2106 Five Mile Line Road to preserve the historic character of that building. Um, we all know his motto was to never say no. He donated countless pizzas to every not-for-profit organization, sports team in the town. I think Marks continues to do that quite a bit. He was instrumental in assisting the town with the Five Mile Line Road reconstruction project. Um, he also uh, unselfishly granted easements over lands to protect a more effective and aesthetically pleasing reconstruction project. And he encouraged his neighboring property owners to do the same and to grant easements. And without the efforts of all of them, there would be no on-street parking along that north leg of Five Mile Line Road. He had provided parking to his neighbors who needed it and gave it up in front of his store um, to ensure that they would have parking for their businesses. He spent countless hours and dollars refurbishing his properties and inspiring others around him to do the same. Um, his renovation within the Four Corners has given a gift to the residents and future generations of Penfield through the preservation of structures when no one else had the time, stamina, or money to so preserve those properties. So it is in his memory uh, that this award is given annually. Um, this year, we have had a flourish of activity in the Four Corners area. You might have noticed a little bit of um, activity uh, in the Four Corners area. We're still waiting on that traffic signal from the state, but we'll get there. Um, I don't see the state up for this award this year. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, we do have actually co-winners this year because of such a flurry of activity um, in, the, in the Four Corners area. It's my um, pleasure to present this, the Jeff Crane Historic Preservation Award uh, first to Tony and Sam DePrima. Do you want to come up, Sam? In recognition of the DePrima's efforts, um, one of many efforts in the town of Penfield over many years, uh, to preserve the structure at 2124 to 2126 Five Mile Line Road, constructed in 1825. Those of you who grew up in Penfield, like us, uh, know it as Embry's Drugstore, um, and later as um, Camwa, and it is now um, the beautiful home of the Angus House restaurant and lounge, lounge. So thank you to the DePrima family. Thank you very much. Very nice. And also uh, to the Barutis, another well-known family in the Four Corners. I still have to call you Mrs. Baruti. I can't, I can't bring myself to call you Joyce, Mrs. Baruti. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was not very long ago no, either. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> in recognition of the Baruti's efforts to preserve the structure at 1823 Penfield Road, constructed circa 1899, again, for those of us who grew up here, Stenner's Hardware. Um, it is now vacant, but has a significant um, upgrade to it to attract incognito from next door to expand into that area. So we're going to be having um, a real exciting expansion after the prom season, I think we were told, um, to happen. So thank you, Brutis, for continuing to invest in the Four Corners area. Okay. And here's your award. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Ron is playing tennis tonight, or he'd love to be here, but he can't miss tennis, you know, he can't do that. <laughs> um, I want to thank the, the town and the Historic um, Preservation Board. I want to give a plug to Randy. He bought the tuxedo shop from Olga and John Boychuk 28 years ago, or is it 24? 28 years ago. He's a young man, and he's been there 28 years already. He's moving next door into our building, and he's very happy about it, and he plans to be here for a long, long time. He sells and rents tuxedos, and the other thing he does is he has gently used upscale men's clothing. He has the whole building, the downstairs and the upstairs. So is anybody, um, I had notes, but I didn't look at them. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think every, I thank everybody for this, and we appreciate it, and we'd like everybody to support the Four Corners. Thank you, Joyce.
Congratulations, uh, congratulations to the Brutis and uh, De Primas. Uh, and I would encourage you to uh, go in and get a nice suit and then go next door and have a great meal. And uh, that's part of uh, what we're trying to do in the uh, Four Corners. So uh, again, thank you for, uh, for everything that you've done uh, to help keep that a very viable area. And there's a lot of very exciting things going on. I have one more small piece of business and then we're going to get into our public hearings. Uh, I know I've got a couple of young ladies here that are, that are anxious, and, but we're going, to get, uh, we're going to get them there. Um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Ray Tierney. Uh, Ray Tierney uh, and I go back a number of years ago. Uh, Ray was uh, formerly on the uh, Brighton Town Board uh, while I was on the Penfield Town Board. Uh, Ray elected uh, not to run after a, a very distinguished career in, uh, in Brighton, and uh, he is uh, fortunate that uh, he's got uh, family on both coasts, uh, in California and uh, I think in the Boston area, if I recall, Ray. And uh, so he and his wife uh, have worked so many years that now they have an opportunity to enjoy family and enjoy life. Uh, but uh, uh, while it's good to see Ray here this evening, uh, it comes on a little bit of a, of a, um, a somber note. And uh, with that, uh, Ray Tierney. Thank you, uh, Tony and members of, uh, of the council. I I'm here tonight. Uh, I'm sure that you recognize that uh, uh, a good friend of mine, a resident of Penfield, and friends of yours, uh, Dick Agnello, passed on Saturday. When I read the uh, notice, uh, there was not any calling hours, and uh, it said to celebrate uh, Dick's life. And I'm going to just, just talk about one little bit uh, where he and I were connected, but it'll be a window into what kind of a person he was. I met him in 1986. I'm a resident, Tony, as you said, of Brighton. I live over near Ellison Park. And there was a problem down at the bottom of the uh, hill. Uh, there was a rendering plant there. And uh, Linda, you're, you're not, you were maybe on the planning board or the zoning board through this, uh, uh, and then subsequently on the town board. And Richard, you're smiling because you were, you were involved. And, and what happened uh, was it was very difficult. It was difficult for the town of Penfield uh, to do something with respect to, to, to what, what happened because it, it, it just was a problem that, that uh, needed, uh, uh, it needed the attorney general. It needed the DEC. And Dick uh, uh, was instrumental in, in helping put that coalition together. And I say that because we would go places and it would be very easy, uh, you know, some people would say I was the fire, but he was the light. He was the person who got people to sit back and say, you know what, that doesn't make any sense, or you know what, let's try that. And uh, uh, I came to know Dick pretty, pretty well, and uh, there is a mechanism today. Tony, you, uh, you host a, uh, a meeting uh, once a month or every other month. Uh, Jim Costello, I saw you out there. Uh, and that was uh, due to uh, efforts of people like Dick Agnello. And I'm not discounting the other people uh, that worked in, 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 in the town of Penfield uh, and other people in, the, in residents of the town of Brighton in trying to solve this problem. And it probably will never, ever be solved because there isn't a business anywhere that doesn't one time or another affect the, the surroundings around it. But it's manageable now. And it's manageable for good reason. Uh, there was somebody like Dick Agnello that uh, rolled up his sleeves and, and worked hard and tirelessly on it. And as I said, that, that's only a very brief part of his life. His, his, uh, he, his, he, his, uh, his wife, Fran, uh, and his two uh, children, uh, Rich and uh, Elizabeth, um, uh, he, was just a, he was just a special guy. Uh, and uh, I'm just here. Um, it's said to celebrate his life, and I took that literally, and I'm here tonight in this small way uh, to celebrate uh, uh, the life of a, of, of, of a person who meant a lot to, to me and a lot to some of the people here and certainly a lot to his family and, uh, and his neighborhood. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. Absolutely. Ray, thank, and thank you. And I think... Uh, uh, your recognition of uh, Dick and uh, truly the celebration of his life is uh, how we want to remember him. And uh, he, he certainly was an advocate for the neighborhood and uh, he worked uh, tirelessly to, uh, to try to address and help that uh, situation. And 
uh, that built the foundation that uh, hopefully today, as we continue to move uh, forward, we continue to be able to address that uh, in a reasonable manner and uh, minimize what uh, took place uh, many, many years ago. So thank you for your time. Again, you're, I, you know, you, you probably have been away from the, uh, the, the political business long enough and uh, the town board uh, activity and things. So if you want to stay in and soak that up to get your fix, uh, you know, we'd welcome that. But uh, we also recognize that, um, you know, uh, it was a special moment for you to come and uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Okay, now we'll move on to our public, uh, we'll move on to our public hearings. Oh, I have, uh, have a, uh, a scout, yes, um, uh, here this evening. So uh, if, uh, if you would please join us, uh, we've got a special event coming up, so bear with me for another uh, minute and a half. Um, and uh, we've got a, a scout that uh, came to the town board about a month ago, and uh, for his Eagle Scout project uh, that's uh, coming up, um, he's uh, out of the uh, scout troop at uh, St. Joe's, if I'm uh, not mistaken. And uh, so he's uh, trying to, uh, to have a little bit of an event that's uh, coming up here in uh, early June. So if, uh, if you would, uh, please tell us about it and how we can uh, participate or get involved. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name's Javier Perez. I'm a Penfield Town resident and a junior at McCoy Jesuit. I'd like to start off by thanking Mr. O'Fountain and the Town Board for allowing me to speak here today. Mr. Castello also for all the assistance he's given me. Um, I'm a member of Boy Scout Troop 260 from St. Joseph's Church here in Penfield. I've uh, been a member of the troop for many years, and I'm currently in the process of achieving my Eagle Scout rank, and I'm also currently in the process of completing my Eagle Scout project, which is why I'm here to speak to you today. Uh, first, a bit of background history. Uh, from first through sixth grade, I attended St. Joseph's School, and when it came time to choose an Eagle Scout project, I wanted to do something that gave back to St. Joseph's School. On the other hand, I've run cross country and track from McQuaid for many years, and so in creating my Eagle Scout project, I combined my love of running with my desire to give back to St. Joseph's School, and so was born the first annual Run of Gratitude 5K and One Mile Family Fun Run to be held on a charity run to be held on Saturday, June 1st at 9.30 a.m. at St. Joseph's Church. This event is open to the public. All proceeds benefit St. Joseph's School. And um, there's a pancake breakfast afterwards free for all participants, uh, $5 for non-participants. But um, I urge the Penfield community to support this worthy cause, to support the first annual Run of Gratitude 5K. Uh, it's open to both runners and walkers. Uh, Registration information can be found on the St. Joseph School website, www.sjspenfield.com. Uh, please support this worthy cause. Thank you for your time, and save the date, Saturday, June 1st. Thank right. you. Great. Saturday, June 1st it is. Uh, yeah. Great cause. And uh, I would just uh, suggest to, to those members in our audience and uh, those that are viewing, um, a lot of times we hear about uh, the youth in our community uh, maybe not uh, being as active as they could or, or maybe not doing all the right things or making all the right choices. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, this board uh, this year, I think we have seen uh, five or six different uh, Eagle Scouts and have attended Eagle Scout Court of Honors. And uh, what I'll suggest to you is that this is, this is what our future is. Uh, what we have standing right here, all of those other Scouts uh, that are out there. And uh, I just want to say on behalf of our community, thank you. So, all right, great. And uh, thank you for uh, bringing him here this evening, and we look forward to a very successful event. All right, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, we will uh, now move into our uh, public hearings, and I'll ask our clerk to please uh, call the first uh, meeting, or first uh, agenda item. Okay, first public hearing. To allow the construction of an outdoor dining area at 1785 Penfield Road in the Four Corners Zoning District, the legal notice was published in the Penfield Post on May 2, 2013 and posted on the town website and the town clerk bulletin board. 36 postcards were mailed and three homeowner associations were notified. Great, uh, thank you. Mr. Horwitz, is this properly before the board? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, with that, uh, Stephanie, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, we do have the packet of material that, uh, that you did submit. Uh, Jim was kind enough to make sure that uh, that came to us. Uh, but uh, what might be a, a nice opportunity is to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how things are going at uh, Signatures uh, today and then uh, getting into a little bit of what uh, you're proposing to do. Yeah. Um, things are going um, extremely well for us. Um, Penfield community has been amazing very supportive. Um, we couldn't ask for anything more. Um, currently we're proposing to put a wraparound porch back on the building. Um, previously it did have the wraparound porch on it and we want to put it back on for in addition to going back to somewhat of the historic aspect of the building to going back um, and getting outdoor seating um, with a covered area so we don't have to worry about rain actually. So. So if you, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, again, we have the materials uh, here in front of us. Uh, the porch uh, will be located on the, north, on the north face and on the east face, so yes. it will wrap around. Uh, again, pretty much similar to what was there uh, back when Dr. Humphrey uh, was uh, alive and utilizing the facility. Uh, can you uh, speak a little bit about uh, uh, is there going to be uh, food uh, on that, at that location? Uh, is there going to be any type of uh, music or anything like that uh, so that uh, the board has an update uh, of that? Yeah, uh, we will be serving food out on the patio in addition to um, drinks. It will be enclosed so there is not steps going down from the front of the building to the sidewalk or anything. The only entrance will be from the bar area, the dining room, or the handicap entrance. So the handicap entrance will be the only um, aspect to come into the porch so we're going to try and just keep that for the handicapped people and everyone else to come through the actual building um, there will not be live music but we probably will have piped out music um, onto the deck um, but it will not extend past the surrounding area how many tables will you have um, we're thinking about 10 tables so seating between 35 and 40 people so it's about an 836 square foot um, proposal at this point in time so we're figuring that should be enough space for people the hours of operation for outdoors? Um, we will we'll be closed. Um, we'll do just like we do now, so 11 a.m. till midnight. So we'll be closed by midnight. We will not stay open longer than that. So. Every night or weekends? or Every, every night. night, yeah. Oh. You open year-round? Um, not the, the porch. Um, we're figuring maybe from early May till Mother Nature likes to permit, I guess. You're not in, <laughs> envisioning any enclosures that drop down or not anything like that? Not at this point in time. Just keep a, a, a porch at this point in time. The porch going in, um, you'll have to take some of the landscaping out. What are you going to do for landscaping? We're going to, in the proposal, it's actually, it is all landscaped around there. Um, I have a very close friend of the family um, does landscape, and he's actually going to come in and do all the landscaping for us, hopefully. So... <laughs> That'd be pretty close to the sidewalk, right? I, mean, um, I don't believe it's going to extend anywhere past where the sign is currently because um, the, the actual porch is not going to extend past the building as it sits right now. So the landscaping, I don't believe, will get that close to the sidewalk. You know, when you look at it, it looks like, how can they put a deck there because it's so close to the road? And I know back in the day when they had it, there was a lot more road than there is now because of the... No. It's going to extend, it won't extend past where the bar, the bar area actually stands out a little bit further than the dining room does currently. Um, so that's what it would, it, the space would be. So from the dining room to the extension of the bar, it's only eight feet from the actual dining room to the extension of the bar. So it'll okay. be eight feet in the front of the building and then 16 feet on the side of the building. Actually, that was a good segue because I was just going to ask about the east side of the building. Uh, I know that there's not that much room between sort of the, the end of the, your property and then there's the driveway to Joey's and mm -hmm. then Joey's so the the 16 foot to the east is that going to encroach upon any any setbacks or uh, I'm looking at Jim back there but um, is there enough room to actually put the 16 feet then okay and how how much distance will be to be between the, the the proposed patio or deck and then sort of the, the road measurement um. <laughs> I think as uh, Mr. Costello is taking a look at the plans, uh, one of the things that it's important to note that uh, this is in the Four Corners uh, area district, and within that, uh, within that district, uh, this board uh, has the, uh, the ability uh, and flexibility to uh, set um, setbacks, uh, parking, and uh, those uh, types of things. So that, uh, uh, similar to some other special districts that we have in the community, um, the setbacks uh, are not as hard to find 
uh, as they are in some of the other business districts. And uh, so, Mr. Costello, our business development uh, specialist. Jim Costello, town of Penfield. The building on the east side is currently 30 feet from the property line. They're proposing 16 feet, so they'll be at 12 feet or 14. 14. 14 feet. You're a great business developer, yeah. but not, <laughs> uh, not a great mathematician. On a, on a the the, the uh, setback requirement per side setback is generally 20 feet in the uh, Four Corners District. As again, you just noted, the board has the ability to modify that as it sees necessary. Right. Thank you. Uh, just for the ref record as well, the existing building where she's talking about the bar jutting out is currently 28 feet from the front property line. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank Beth, you very much. Can you talk a little bit about the materials you intend to use? Mm -hmm. um, we're going to use, um, it's not quite a Trex board. It's very similar, um, but it's going to be a tongue and groove board. Um, so it'll create almost like a nice, just flat wooden surface. Um, so nothing can fall through the cracks or anything like that. Um, and it's no maintenance. Um, so there won't be, you know, going out and staining it every year. So once it's put up, it will look the same as the first day that it was put up. So pillars, I assume, pillars mm -hmm. will be coming down. Yep. For support and everything. What kind of lighting are you going to have on the porch? Um, we're going to have lights up on top. We'll do um, some ceiling fans with some lights on that, and then probably do some, you know, I haven't quite figured that exactly out. Um, probably some lights around the perimeter as well. So. There will be no no changes to um, uh, the sign uh, that currently exists, and uh, will there be any impact on current parking? Nope. I don't know if PCTV wants to get a shot of the um, picture that you provide to us. If they can get in. <laughs> I think it's a fascinating picture, and I, I commend you for using it as a template. I believe we were told this was circa 1915 or around there. Yeah, right around there. Um, and so I, I commend you for using this as a source of guidance for you. It would be interesting. Excellent. I just want to echo those remarks. When, when you originally proposed an outdoor, it was more of an outdoor patio, uh, and... Uh, you know, by taking some time, starting the business, sort of building the clientele, I think it allowed you to find these pictures, and now you come back with what was a more permanent structure. And I was unaware that the original house had a wraparound deck, so I think it's great that you're going to return it to its original style. So I, I commend you for your, your diligence and your patience, and then for wanting to do this. Thank you. Yep. Great. Okay, board, uh, other questions uh, for the applicant? No. Nope. All right. Uh, stay put just for a moment. Um, is uh, anyone signed up to speak uh, on this uh, particular application? And this uh, is at uh, 1785 Penfield Road, Signatures Humphrey House. I do not have anyone for this public hearing. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that uh, did not sign up but would like to address this particular matter? All right. Um, Stephanie, any additional input that uh, you'd like to share with the board that uh, has not been put on the record? Okay. And I'll ask uh, town staff, uh, Mr. Costello, is there anything uh, that uh, is not on the record that you believe is uh, pertinent to this application? Okay, great. Uh, with that, and seeing no further comment, I'll declare this public hearing closed. So for this particular item and the other two public hearings, uh, the board will not take action this evening. Uh, the board, uh, the next time the board will have a conversation on this matter and the other two public hearings will be next Wednesday. Uh, we'll do that right here in the back of this room. Uh, that is open to the public and would encourage anyone to come to hear that uh, dialogue and discussion uh, between uh, staff uh, and the board. And uh, then from there, the board will render a decision on the matters. Uh, so, great. Thank you for your time. Thank we you appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, I'll ask our clerk uh, to read the uh, second public hearing, please. To allow a dog grooming business at 1850 Penfield Road in the Four Corners Zoning District, the legal notice was published in the Penfield Post on May 2nd, 2013 and posted on the town website and town clerk bulletin board. 22 postcards were mailed and three homeowner associations were notified. Great, thank you very much. Mr. Horwitz, uh, is this properly before the board? Yes, it is. Thank you. Tonight, I think we have Jamie and uh, Brooke uh, here with us. If uh, you would uh, 
uh, please uh, identify yourselves. Uh, we do have your packet of materials uh, that we have had an opportunity to uh, take a look at ahead of time. And uh, so uh, please relax because this is not a, this is not a scary group. I, I promise. Uh, I'm so. Jamie Bunting. I'm Brooke Childs. Uh, thank you guys for you know letting us come present to you. Um, we're basically, we're hoping to open up a dog grooming business, which will be called Hounds of Love Grooming Salon at 1850 Penfield Road. Um, right now, the site, it's a freestanding building. It's approximately 850 square feet located behind the Enchanted Rose Garden. Uh, we want Hounds of Love to be an intimate and personal small business. We want to get to know our clients, so we plan on only having Brooke and me working there. Uh, we do plan to be open six days a week with operating hours between 8.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Um, we will have a sign under the Enchanted Rose Garden sign with obviously our own name and logo. Um, and for parking, there's approximately 18 to 20 parking spots in the parking lot. Um, we feel this is more than sufficient for the amount of business we plan on doing. Um, we'll, we will be booking grooming appointments approximately one and a half to two hours apart per groomer, averaging about 10 client cars per day. Um, clients don't usually stay during the grooming appointments, so they will only be using the parking spaces in about five to 10 minute increments. We believe that the Hounds of Love will be an asset to the town of Penfield, and we're excited to hopefully become a part of the community. Well, thank you. Great, thank you. So that was uh, pretty painless, right? <laughs> yeah. So far, pretty <laughs> so painless. Hard. All right. Uh, board, uh, question uh, for, the, uh, for the applicants. Uh, just one quick question. I have one question, but in 27 different parts. <laughs> um, are you planning on doing any boarding of animals at this location? Nope. Okay, so animals will be coming and going within one day or oh, within yes. an hour or two or so? Yeah, okay. um, normal standard size dogs will hopefully be gone in two hours. Big dogs, you know, like a Newfoundland, maybe three or four, but yeah, okay. just only one day. Great, thank you. Yep. Are you limiting it to dogs only? Yes, dogs only. I was gonna ask a question, but you're off the hook, because he asked mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> So <clears throat> at the end of the day, uh, you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have a little bit of material, uh, probably mostly hair, but maybe some other materials. And how, how are you going to handle that? Uh? Um, well, I know there is no dumpster on the site or anything. Um, right now, we're just planning on bringing the garbage home with us. Um, I know I talked to Eileen Rona, who owns the Enchanted Rose Garden, and she said that we would talk about maybe um, looking into garbage pickup. Uh, I don't know. We haven't really talked too much about that just because we need to get approved before we can be there. So, um, But yeah, right now the plan is just to bring it home at the okay. end of the day. We only generate maybe one bag of garbage a day. So Okay. And I would, <clears throat> I would encourage you that um, if uh, you get involved with uh, some type of a, a week <clears throat> weekly pickup, uh, uh, that uh, you work with Mr. Costello by way of any type of uh, dumpsters. It sounds like it would probably be more a tote yes. uh, rather than a dumpster. He did mention if we uh, had a dumpster, it would have to be enclosed. Okay, in very good. That, so. that sounds like Jim. Very good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure that uh, there's no surprises as yes. uh, as we go through. All right. Is Eileen aware of the hours that you're proposing? And yes. Okay. Yep. Do you have a sign rendering yet? Um, we submitted a logo that we're going to put up for, our, yes, mm -hmm. there it is, in for our, our sign. Um, yeah, um, we haven't really gone any further about, you know, getting it or anything. Um, we did measure, have the measurements, I don't have them with me, but there, it's going to go right where um, Deliciously Different had a sign right there that's already taken down, and we're just planning to do the exact same type of sign right in their right spot. There. Okay, great. Do you have to do, or do you plan on doing any interior or exterior alterations to the current structure? No, current no structural changes. Okay. Do you have previous experience <clears throat> with dog grooming? Yes. We um, actually both, uh, we've worked together before. We worked over at Fido's Canine Boutique over in Pittsburgh. That Probably recently has closed down. Oh. Um, so it put us you know, out of a job temporarily. And this was, but yeah, I've been in the business for about five years. I've been in the business two years. So, yeah, we have a nice uh, following of clientele, and they're just waiting for us to find a home. So. Right. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Board. Uh, other questions uh, for the applicants? Uh, I'll ask our clerk if anyone signed up to speak uh, on this particular item. It's uh, 1850 Penfield Road, uh, dog grooming facility. No one. 
for this okay. public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that did not sign up but would like to address the board on this particular matter? Okay, seeing none, I will ask the applicants any other information that you would like to share with the board that uh, you believe is uh, pertinent to this particular application for the record? I don't think so. Okay, great. And uh, Mr. Costello, uh, from a staff standpoint, anything that uh, we should be aware of? I think they've covered everything. All right, great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, then uh, seeing no further input, uh, declare this public hearing closed. I would invite you to come back next Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and uh, you can listen to the uh, discussion of the board. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. We'll move on to our third public hearing this evening. To consider request for <coughs> reduction of a conservation <coughs> easement at 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 64, and 68 Willow Bridge Trail in Phase 3 of Wyndham Woods Subdivision. The legal notice was published in the Penfield Post on May 2nd, 2013, and posted on town website and town clerk bulletin board. Um, eight postcards were mailed and three homeowner associations were notified. Great, thank you very much. Uh, I'll ask Mr. Horowitz, is this properly before the board? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. And um, I see Mr. Cavalcanti is uh, getting uh, uh, a map ready, and then when he is ready, I'll just ask him to introduce himself and then uh, address the board as to what is uh, planned for this area. And uh, again, a reminder, we, we do have the materials uh, in, in front of us. Thank you, and uh, Mr. Costello provided all the uh, details and the data. So with that, the floor is yours, sir. Mr. Supervisor, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, I represent Don Lodadio, 44 Witherspoon Lane, Penfield, New York. Excuse me, Mike. For the record, you do need to um, say your name and address. When did I say that? Okay. My name is Michael Cavalcanti, 4 Beverly Street, Rochester, New York. I represent Don Lodadio, 44 Witherspoon Lane, uh, Penfield, New York. Don is the sole member of Wyndham Woods Subdivision, LLC owner of Wyndham Wood Subdivision on 1380 Five Mile Line Road in Penfield, New York. Wyndham Woods LLC respectfully requests this evening a 12.5 feet reduction of the conservation e easement on lots 308, 309, 310, 312, and 313, and reduction of a conservation easement of 20 feet on lots 316 and 317 but not to invade the wetland delineation as shown on the map that I will now pass out to you. The subdivision was approved on July 19, 2006, amended on May 16, 2007, and amended on February 16, 2011, with various design modifications developed with, with the developer, the planning department, neighborhood residents, and the town board. The plan was modified by removing two of the previously planned cul-de-sacs and creating a loop road to more efficiently handle snow and allowing for a loop water system and the removal of private drives. It was agreed through this process that the developer would create a conservation easement as a method of protect, protecting as many of the existing trees that uh, did not interfere with the installation of public utilities and the construction of residential homes. This well-intended effort has caused an unintended consequence. The 25-foot conservation easement has rendered the rear yards of lots 308 through 312 and 316 and 317 unusable to install swimming pools, create a meaningful, meaningful outside play area for children and outside storage, ed, storage sheds that wind up deep in the yard as opposed to on the lot line due to the conservation easement requirements for setback. In addition, the conservation easement Lots 308 through 312 have a drainage swale adjacent to the conservation easement, further limiting the development and use of the property 
uh, as a backyard. A close inspection of the intended conservation easement has revealed an area of concentrated brush, secondary scrub trees, half inch in diameter, rotting falling trees, excess building materials from neighbors, lots, pipes, pallets, and a variety of unnatural uh, material, none of which was intended to be protected by the conservation easement. I have some pictures that I'll pass out to the board. It's been our experience over the last six months as a variety of lots previously mentioned are staked out for the potential homeowners approval of their purchase and sale agreement, the contract was declined for reasons previously stated, specifically no pool available availability, no backyard space for uh, play for children and a limitation of outbuildings creating a hardship for the developer. Wyndham Woods is requesting a reduction of the conservation easement by 12 and a half feet and by 20 feet, keeping most of the conservation easement in place, providing protection for the major tree stand that is adjacent to the wetlands and Tupa Creek. The request for 12 and a half reduction, foot reduction would keep the spirit of the conservation easement, providing growing space for larger trees, removing the unwanted unnatural materials put there by others and provide more space in the backyards to be able to construct swimming pools and children's outside play areas. It will go a long way to combat the issues that have surfaced by the potential home buyers and remove the unintended hardship for the developer. I'd like to thank uh, the board for letting me speak this evening. And uh, if you have any questions at this time, I'll be very pleased to try to answer them. Questions, comments. What plans um, do you have, Mr. Cavalcanti, if this is granted to, as you mentioned, um, add some more trees, add more of a, a buffer on those lots? Is there room to do that? There is, and we could certainly, uh, we would open up discussions with Mr. Costello and the landscape uh, people in the town to work with them, and that's also, I'd be very pleased to work with the, the neighbors to find some solution to our hardship and see, and see if we can accommodate, you know, our needs and their needs. So if this, um, if this request were not granted, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what hardships do you see? I know you articulated that uh, you had, uh, you had some folks that uh, came in and uh, elected to uh, cancel their, their offer or their uh, potential contract. Um, and, uh, but what, uh, what hardships do you see uh, or overall impact do you see uh, for these uh, particular seven lots? I see specifically those lots uh, having the potential of going vacant, not able to be sold, or in the event, in the ability, in, in the trying to sell them, would cause much smaller houses to be built, which is not keeping with the the houses that are currently being built there. And uh, uh, what did what did you have in mind uh, by way of uh, some additional landscaping to kind of follow up on the conversation uh, with uh, uh, from uh, Councilwoman Metzler? Um, what uh, what have you thought about by way of uh, any type of uh, landscaping or buffering uh, at this point? Well, there is an existing buffering there now. We would be invading 12 and a half feet of it, but there would still be 12 and a half feet of uh, trees. Uh, admittedly, they're, uh, they're not the kind of, uh, somewhat, most of them are scrub, unfortunately, in that particular area, which is on the south side of the Wyndham Woods uh, subdivision. But uh, we could uh, entertain the planting some pine trees as opposed to uh, uh, 
just taking invading that space, but uh, we could probably work that out with the neighbors and or the homeowners that m move into those lots once they have more space to develop their outside area. This conservation easement date back to when the original property was purchased uh, and, and approved? It does? Okay. I was looking over towards Jim, just so. Uh, <laughs> the, okay. the issue uh, that came up, when we took the uh, cul-de-sac lots out, which are very deep by their nature, and then we put this loop road in. To accommodate the loop road, we moved, the, the road was moved farther into the lots that would have been, had the deeper lots. So the lots became shallower. And with that conservation easement and with the swale, there's literally uh, no backyard to, do, to use as a, uh, any type of flat surface. So the, the original design with the cul-de-sacs would have allowed I guess an, an additional 13 or 12 and a half feet to the back of these yards. Well, but, we wouldn't be here talking today. <laughs> right, but but by making the looped road, it sort of then pushed the homes further south and into, I guess, unusable land by the developer. The homes came much closer to the uh, to the uh, conservation easement. So where we did some good things, we had this happen and uh, I think we can tr try to uh, work it out with everyone if given a chance. Okay. All right. Board, other uh, questions or comments uh, at this time? Okay. Um, uh, our clerk, uh, is there anyone that has signed up to uh, speak on this particular matter? And uh, this is Wyndham Woods. And I would just note that uh, the map uh, on the board, uh, generally north is up, but uh, <laughs> I, think the way it, I think the way it is set up, uh, I, just so as folks are coming up to speak for or against this, uh, they're just recognizing uh, how the map uh, placement is. So with that, has anyone signed up to speak, please? Yes, we have several. Uh, our first speaker is Terry Lee. Terry Lee, Mr. Lee, a former colleague from Eastman Kodak Company, new resident of the town of Penfield. Uh, welcome. Thank you, Tony. And thank you, men and women of the council and all residents of Greece. My name is Terry Lee. I'm a resident at 28 Willow Bridge Trail, or on the associated map that you have in front of you, we're lot 307. First, let me say that I'm pleased to be a resident of Penfield, having lived here now a robust 10 weeks. Uh, I'm certainly <laughs> enjoying my experience, my new home, the closeness to family, and all of the community services that are available here. It really is an enjoyable experience, and I hope it continues. My interest in this is solely one of consistency. As you'll see from the materials in front of you, my lot, 307, 28 Willow Bridge, is not included in the revi revised easement as just presented. And many of the things that you've heard around small backyards and constraints to recreational purposes and living space and yardscape are true. And I recognize that when I purchased this property, all of those things to be true. My intent is only that of consistency and ask the board that if you are to consider the revision as requested, that my lot also be included in that. So I ask for consistency uh, to make all of the lots along the southern perimeter of this phase of Wyndham Woods equal to the same uh, revised uh, procedures. I also would point out, while I have no real intent either way for this revision, uh, that the mature old growth trees that represent the bulk of the visual barrier that are still existing are on the south side of the existing easement, the south 12 and a half feet that is proposed to be maintained. As previously mentioned, the north side, the north half of that 25 feet, is largely new growth, sumac tree, nuisance bushes, a number of beer cans, bottles, and other things 
that are relatively low value don't contribute to the conservation easement and I don't really believe is the intent as I read the document as originally developed some years ago. So again, my primary uh, desire is that of consistency to be included in the group. My intent is to maintain my property, my new property uh, in good order to put additional shrubs in at my expense. Uh, but I do want to see that if all of the rest of the lots along the south side extend back further, cut back of this uh, low growth vegetation, that I be able to do the same thing, not only for consistency and current value of my property, but also future resale value in the event that I move on and my children have to dispose of the property. So I thank the, the board for their consideration in this. Uh, I urge them if this is revised uh, and this motion is approved to include me in this standing also. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Terry. Thank you for your time. Erica Baumbach. <coughs> Erica, welcome. I live at 17 Crossbow Drive. I have two cons major concerns. First, one morning I got up and looked out my window and I looked to the left and I said, why is there an opening? Where are the trees? There were no trees in a particular area. So I went out and I found a big hole with two men in it. You think it's funny? No, I just well, I interrogated these two guys, basically the head guy. I said, what are you doing? Where are the trees? What happened to my trees? Why do I have a hole? So I have a whole view of willow, whatever it is, which I don't care to have. And they explained they were putting in a catch basin, which that meant nothing to me. What, a sewer? Explain it. So he told me to sinking this thing in and they're gonna grade the, the backyard so the water runs into the catch basin. I said, you better hope it does. All I could picture at that moment was when I was coming home from someplace one day and five mile line of plank road were flooded. The farmland on either side was flooded. All I could picture was my backyard being flooded if this catch basin forgets to catch. So that's, that's a concern of mine. If we have a heavy downpour, is this catch basin once it's completed? I don't think it's even been completed yet as far as what they're supposed to fill in. It's complete. It's going to be a hole forever? No, there's a, there's a, there's a man. I'd ask Mr. Cavalcanti um, if you're going to speak, if you just come up, uh, because we do tape, uh, we do tape this, and uh, folks uh, do have an opportunity to rewatch this. And uh, so uh, having the, uh, the microphone uh, helps uh, with making sure everyone hears. So. Uh, well, it looks today like it looked in October when I was out interrogating the guys. It's, it's still a hole. I was under the impression that it was going to be graded and leveled and put grass on top, and all I'd see was the grate. Oh, not as of yesterday. It's still a hole. I tried to go out and measure 12 and a half feet, 25 feet, and I had to be careful not to get too close to the sides so I didn't fall in the hole and the grate would catch me instead of what it's supposed to catch. So it hasn't been filled in and graded. It's still wrapped in black plastic. The grate is covered with leaves. Nothing's been done since last October when I first discovered it was there. So my concern is, is my yard going to take a hit if this grate doesn't catch what it's supposed to catch when we have a heavy downpour. I really don't care to float away. Right, right. And we don't, and we don't want you to float away. Well, thank you. 
But I'm sure there are lots of things that people don't want, but they happen anyways, for whatever reason. Things look good on paper, but in actuality, Mother Nature, she's fickle. You can't, you know, you can't be too careful. Can't predict. I don't care to float down the street when I'm coming home. <laughs> so that, that's a concern of mine. I'm not sure how that's going to work. A large tree, of course, the trees that were there are now gone to make room for this catch basin, but a large tree in the course of one day could drink a thousand, up to a thousand gallons of water in one day, one big tree. I wish I still had a big tree to catch the overflow. So we'll have to see how much water this catch basin catch basin catches as long as it's not in my yard. But I'll be watching the grading. And as far as um, taking away the 12 and a half feet, there's hardly anything left. My, my family room is like a disco. Headlights, any car that comes in or goes out, I get lights spinning around in my family room. It, ups, it scares me. It, it, my cats sleep in the window. They even get scared. Cody runs down the cellar. I says, it's okay, it's just a car. It's not coming here. <laughs> but we got lights. If I wanted a disco, I would have bought a disco ball. And now you want to take another 12 and a half feet of trees, the ones that are still left. That's disturbing to me. Life as I knew it when I moved here 17 years ago, it's all gone. I moved because I loved the trees. I loved the lot. I had two cats. I wanted a lot of land so the cats could stay on their property without walking two feet and being in somebody else's yard. But now it's all, it's all open. It's not beautiful anymore. I don't like looking out the window and seeing houses and I can't even, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like when I have a, a three or four houses in my backyard. So I'm stressed and distressed and not happy about it. And when I got that postcard about taking 12 and a half feet more trees, well, I can't say to you what I said to my cats. But I don't like it. I'm not convinced the catch basin is going to catch everything it should. And I love my trees. I've never, I, I guess I'm a tree hugger. I love plants, I love grass, flowers. I'm going to have to go home and hug the trees while they're still there to hug, I guess. But it's, 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 it's very distressful for me, and I, I, I just am so sorry all this is happening. I liked it better when I moved here. That's why I moved to that house, because I had trees, I had land. It was beautiful. And now you can see through trees, and with 12 and a half feet more gone, what's that? And putting in, what are you going to do? Where are you going to put in extra spruce trees, Michael? If you're taking out 12 and a half feet, where do you think you're going to put trees to make up for the 12 and a half feet of trees that are removed? You're not going to have, if you put trees in that 12 and a half feet, you're defeating the purpose. You're taking out 12 and a half, or you want to take out 12 and a half feet of trees for a bigger yard. So where are you going to put new greenery? I think the, uh, I think the proposal by, uh, <clears throat> by Mr. Cavalcanti um, is that 25-foot, uh, that, uh, that 25 foot strip uh, that uh, 12 and a half uh, be used to extend the yard and the other 12 and a half potentially for uh, additional landscaping. 
is uh, is well, what. Well, what are you going to do with the trees in that first 25, uh, 12 and a half? Well, gonna... the potential, potentially, some of those trees could be removed. Oh. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm done. Hey, is there uh, anyone else that has signed up to uh, to speak? Then Beto. Hi, Lee. Welcome. <coughs> Good to see you. Hello, Mr. Fountain, board members. I'm like, uh, Lee Zambito, 19 Crossbow Drive. I guess correct me at any time if I'm wrong, but the original plans called for the three cul-de-sacs with the private drives or that thing, and then it was revised again and revised again. At the time we first met, you gave me a map and um, showed me what was going to be proposed. And I'm thinking that somewhere along the line, the board wanted to conserve the trees. So a plan came after that to eliminate one of those houses on the south end and move the houses closer to the street to conserve the trees, thus the conservation easement. And the fence went in and like that. So I'm assuming that the town board wanted the developer, and I gotta just say Mike because I mess up your last name all the time, I'm sorry. Um, so Mike redid the plans to please the board because that was a request of yours to save as many trees as possible all along. In the back end is the, the federal wetlands and also a buffer area. And I don't know if how that infringes on that in that 68 down by the Tufa Glen Creek area there. And like I know there's federal wetlands there and then there's a buffer area. So I don't know if that extends there or not. I know it's hard to judge how many trees there are, but over half of them have been removed, and you lose sight of that because they're gone. And Mike was very kind one day and walked through where haphazardly that orange fence went in, and then the loggers came and started cutting down the trees. And Mike had come down, and he had come over and spoke with me, and he had actually walked through and said, geez, I saw some trees that were really close to that, yep, that fence, and he wanted to save them. So I know he wants to save the trees. I, I, I do believe that. But in taking away that extra 12 feet and taking away those trees kind of like defeats what you told me before. So I know there's trials and tribulations of any business, but I also think that patience is a virtue. You know, a wise person once said there's a seat for every backside. So you'll get that person eventually that's gonna come that doesn't want to have a pool, that doesn't have any children, doesn't wanna maintain a large yard. You just have to be patient and not expect other people to, just because you're maybe not patient enough or whatever, to suffer the consequences. If in fact that you do decide, I would strongly, or please, please put in more trees to get rid of the, to replace the ones that are taken. Um, you did say substantial trees. I don't know how substantial substantial is. I mean, you're gonna put in like a six foot tree and it's gonna take 12 years to grow to something that's going to be a decent type of buffer, or is it going to be the smaller trees that are spaced like 12, 14 feet apart that really aren't gonna do much. So we could get together and talk about that as well. I mean, that might be an option, but right now I just kind of think you're going against, it's like changing the rules of the game right in the middle because you don't want to play anymore. <laughs> That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Time. Good to see you. Is there anyone else that has signed up to speak? Francis Cardinal. Hi, Francis. How are you? I'm trying to be good. Uh, I live at 15 Crossbow. I'm the guy that has the pipe in the backyard and the uh, pallets and things because I was expecting this day and there's nothing been cleaned out in the back of my house because I knew it was coming. I don't know if you people know it. I know Jim Costello and uh, our other friend here. 
where I've dealt with them for years and years, the water comes from this thousand acre swamp. It comes right down through all this land and dumps out and goes across the road. Myself, Mr. and Mrs. Cordello, uh, Wambach, uh, Mrs., uh, Erica, Zambitos, we all, and we all created a swale because we were getting flooded. Right or wrong? 100% right, right? Okay, we did it on our own. We didn't ask anybody. Mr. and Mrs. Zambito put a pipe two and a half inches round, or two and a half feet round the full length of their property to dump the water into the creek. Now, we have the swale there, and I understand he's created a swale, but he's also raised the backyards at least two feet. What happens? The water comes to us. The water's going to dump onto us and come down because we're lower than they are. And I don't believe the town lets you people raise the lawn. They've raised them. Erica, in fact, Jim can go there tomorrow and he can see the, the catch basin they put in, right? On the back, between her and I, there's a, probably about a 10-foot circle that they hogged out the ground, just left it like it is. So, yes, they got a catch basin there. But that catch basin, after today's rain, go look at it. It's washing everything down. And I'd like to know if the DEC knows about this request. The request about, uh, the, about the potential? Yeah, the conservation. It, 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 isn't, it isn't part of uh, the DEC uh, jurisdiction. The wetland isn't? The wetlands are. Right. But if you're if you're talking about if you're talking about this conservation easement and the discussion right. about the conservation easement, right. that's not their jurisdiction. And the houses that they built over there are like crammed together. You can see it. You people let them do that so they can put more houses in there. You give them concession there, right? Now, we didn't plan for this. We didn't ask them to change it. Move the road ahead. Leave the trees where they are. Because you get all that water coming down there. That watershed from the thousand acre swamp. And I know, as sure as I'm standing here, that all that's coming up. We called the town and we asked them, please have them cut the dust down when they're putting the roads in and things, right? Mr. and Mrs. Cordello, have a pool. Mr. and Mrs. Zambito, have a pool. How are they going to use them? The dust keeps coming. You can't even open your windows. Your cars, you've got to take them and wash them because they're all grit. And all we asked them to do was keep the dust and things down. Did you do that? Nope, you did. Where do you live? You don't live where I live. So, I mean, I don't see why we should have to give any concessions. Does the Water Authority know about this? They have an easement all the way down through there. There's Water Authority right from the road all the way to the creek. They're, they're uh, involved in this? The, the, uh, the they, water they have an easement. They do have an easement. Right. Um, so uh, within, the, within the easement, uh, you can't build any structures. Right. Uh, you can plant trees at your own risk. Sure. Because uh, what happens is, is that if they have to get in and open that up, uh, the trees would be removed and they will not be replaced if it's within their easement. I understand um, that fully. So that's, that's, how that, uh, that's how that works. Um, again, uh, the, wa the Water Authority uh, does not have a say as to what uh, is uh, being done as what the applicant is proposing um, unless uh, the applicant had proposed uh, to dig up their pipe or tie into their pipe or do something different with their pipe. Well, at, the, at the present time, I think I may be wrong, but I think that the catch basin that was put in has been encroached into the easement already. Am I right or wrong? So if the I'll just clarify one thing. Yes. The 20 foot easement for the Monroe County Water Authority is on this gentleman's property. It's not on any part of Wyndham Woods. And okay. second thing I would like to clear up, the catch basin is clearly on Wyndham Woods property and not encroaching on, on anything on crossbow. Okay. Thank you. 
and it's that catch basin is about three and a half feet below the level of Erica's property. And like I said, it's hogged out like you are in the circle at the radius. Yes. So nothing there to protect it. I'm sure that this man, these two men right here, will agree with me that something has to be done there because everything is going to wash into it. So reg regardless of what uh, the board uh, does or does not do with a request from the developer, uh, we certainly have uh, the ability to take a look and follow up on uh, utilities uh, that uh, have been installed in there to make sure that they have been installed uh, property, properly to plan and uh, what have you. So we can, we can do that and follow up with that. Again, regardless of what happens with this application, uh, we can have uh, our DPW crews and engineering crews go out and take a look at that. Well, I'm pretty sure that Mark has done his homework. So, he usually does. Yep, he does. So... But I just don't see why we should have to make another concession. They made a mistake, so you live with your mistake. That's all I can tell you. It's, you know? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Francis. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Careful. I don't want to have to fill out that paperwork. <laughs> okay. Is there uh, anyone else that has uh, signed up? Uh, yes, sir. Dominic, how are you? Thank you, Dominic. <laughs> Dominic, please. Um, my name is Dominic Cordello, and this is my wife Donna, and I live at 11 Crossbow Drive. Um, I think I'm one of the folks. If I could, excuse me. If I could just ask, uh, at courtesy to the person that's speaking, I just ask if you if you need to have that conversation, please just take it out to the hall. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, I live at 11 Crossbow Drive. I'm one of the houses that probably was affected the most from the subdivision. Um, I got three lots touching my backyard. Um, and I knew it was coming, and we watched it happen. And it's been going on for over a year now. And um, I just watched it. And I, I, I watched it go on, and I see the houses go up. And I see trees start to disappear. I have some photos where... We had things that aren't there anymore. The shrub and bushes just weren't there the next day. On, like, on, your, can I show you these? on your property? Well, behind me. I don't know if it's in the conservation because I'm not completely familiar where the conservation area is. But I can see that well, things the are... Property line, the prop, your property line, your rear property line, that's the start of the conservation easement. So, well, then there's things that have been removed. Can I show so, you these? So it's on your property? The conservation. No, the, the, what, the, conservation, the conservation easement is not on your property. No, it's 25 uh, feet from my and land. I, and so my question is, is that uh, the trees that have been removed, are, have those trees been on your property no. that have been removed? No. Okay, They're I just want to make the sure. Conservation area. Within the conservation easement. Okay. Okay, now you look out. I look out at this area every day. I see what's there. For 20 years I've lived there. And um, things have changed. Okay, and I'll accept change. I've seen that they started planting. They came from Five Mile Line. They started planting all these bushes. And I for sure thought that they would continue on. As the subdivision continued on, I thought that the plantings would continue on. Because these ended at the end of the year. They, weren't, they probably got them in at the end of the planting season. And I thought when they started up again, they would continue on. So I guess what I'm a little upset about is that there's people right in my backyard. I feel like I have a hardship now. And I've been there for 20 years. I built the house myself. And when I came to Penfield, they told me that you have to do this, this, and this. And I always did it because those were the ordinances that, and those were the zonings at the time. So I followed the rules and I did what I had to do. Um, now we're changing things and 
I don't see any good faith. If they would have started putting trees in first and I could see a barrier or I could see something where, well, maybe it won't be so bad. But all you're doing is coming in and say, I want to take some more of your property. You're going to be right on my deck pretty soon. Well, you don't live there. I do. Nope, I'm not in this deck. Okay. I, I, I've been in this, in this house for 20 years. I could look out and see Plank Road, you know, without any obstructions. I've seen deer in my backyard. I've seen wildlife. That's another thing. I have no bottles or cans. My property is clean. You know, I have a lawn service. They take care of my land. It sounds like we have a little slum in the back of the, of the properties. There is not. You know, uh, I don't know where all these bottles and cans and stuff is, is coming from, but it's not in my backyard, which uh, connects to these three backyards. So basically, all I'm saying is, if this came down as it was supposed to, it probably would have looked a lot better for when someone came in. If, if you would have gave this appearance of, I want to make this look better and put these seven-foot pine trees in here, it might have uh, not even been an, an issue, you know. It, it, it may, they may have already solved their problem by beautifying the, 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 the area and going from there. And as far as the people in front of me not having a big yard, they bought the house. I'm sure they, they knew what they were getting into when they bought the house. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to give up any more land than I already have. And if I could show you a couple of pictures, I'd like to do that, too. This is where the trees came down, and this is what it looks like, and that's where they stopped. And it, it looks really nice, okay? This is what I look at. This. This is my pool to the house behind me. I have three great big trees in my backyard that I would really, really not want to see gold cover. The one that's on the river going to stay there, you know, and now we're... Let, let's, let's, you know, let's make sure we understand. Uh, the proposal is not to come on to your property. Oh, no, it's not on my property. It's in the... <coughs> in that area. conservation easement. Okay, so you talk about your trees. They're... Well, they're... These trees are in my oh, backyard, okay. on the conservation area. But not on your property. Not on my property, okay. but I, I was under the, or I thought that they were never going to be touched because they were in the conservation area. Okay. And they made a great barrier, and they do right now, so you can see in some of those. But other than that, I've, uh, I, you know, I, I live and let live. The houses are there. I can't do anything about it. But now it's just like one, a little bit more. And I'm not comfortable with that. You know? So that's about all I could tell you. Is there anything else? Thank you, Dominic. My name is Donna Cordello, 11 Crossbow Drive. Um, as you can see by the photos, we do not have any privacy in our backyard. While the trees are full in the summer and it's somewhat of a barrier, they're barren, of course, in the winter. And it's wide open, which I am looking at six backyards. And as um, Mr. Carnell said, he's right. The elevation of the new houses are up, which I never realized in a, in a map you don't see that. The houses behind you are going to be higher up, which, again, um, obstructs your privacy. I was under the um, impression also with these Christmas trees, I don't understand why or how the board did not um, ask the developer to continue with the trees. Like every other new development in Penfield, there's usually a berm, trees, Christmas trees, bushes, that has some kind of a barrier from the new to the old uh, existing houses. I don't, I did not oppose this new development uh, for 20 years. I was very lucky and blessed to have a beautiful field that I looked at for 20 years. And I understand that the people behind us have just as much of a right to live in Penfield as we do. 
where our houses were probably once a beautiful field. I don't deny the people in the new development the right to be there. I never oppose this project. However, I would like to see more division. I would like to see more Christmas trees in the back all the way down. And also, um, I'm under the impression this is a Ryan Holmes yes. development. And I urge you to read this history of NVR Inc., which is the parent company for Ryan Homes. Ryan Homes builds in 15 states. They're a home building and mortgage uh, banking company, the la one of the largest in the country. In 2003, they had a $3.7 billion in revenue. I think the solution to this hardship would be to price those lots accordingly. And it would be a lot less financial impact on Ryan Homes than it would be to the neighbors on Crossbow Drive. And I am going to leave you the history of NVR, which is the parent company for Ryan Homes. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for that information. Is there uh, anyone else, uh, Amy, that has uh, signed up? I have anyone else. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that uh, did not sign up uh, but would like to address this matter? Okay. Mr. Uh, Cavalcanti, any additional input that you would like to provide the board at uh, this time? And I would ask staff, uh, Mr. Costello, is there any additional information uh, that you would like to add uh, to, this, to the record of this particular application? Thank you, Mr. LaFon. Jim Costello, Director of Developmental Services. Um, when Mr. Cavalcani came to the town to ask for this request, the town staff looked at options as to how we could further minimize impact of the neighbors. One of the things we looked at was the possibility of planting trees on the neighbor's property, but there's a constraint, as several of the neighbors have noted, there's a 20-inch transmission water line running east-west in their backyards immediately adjacent to the property line. So to put trees, as you noted earlier, Mr. LaFound, if you put trees over an easement area and they have to come out, there's no guarantee they're ever going to go back in. So that's not the option in terms of solving the problem. I do also remember very distinctly at the time that we were looking at the revision of this project with the town board, uh, we did identify Mr. Gerlach's property as being a, a target area for additional trees because he basically had almost nothing there to begin with. We did look at the Cardellos property as well because it was a little bit iffy um, as to how many trees were going to be preserved, if, if all or any. And I remember the board distinctly discussing the matter with Mr. Cavalcani indicating that if trees were going to be removed or there were going to be less trees than what were there, that we would look at the opportunity of planting additional trees as we did similarly to Mr. Garlic if, if that was needed. And I do believe there is money in the letter of credit that we're holding for the developer development of the site that, that could allow that to occur. But that was a discussion that we did have. Um, and just until very recently, I know one of our coworkers has been meeting with Mr. and Mrs. Cardello about th this issue. Um, it hadn't become an issue until very recently, but because of this issue, I think he's been out a couple times to your home. Um, so we are aware of the concern that they have for the lack of trees in their backyard that initially they thought they were going to have when the project started. So that's pretty much where we are right now with this situation. Um, there's not a lot of area to plant additional trees other than, the, you know, unless they can embellish that 12 and a half foot area, there's not much more area to do it unless you, you keep the easement where it is now. Crystal. Okay. Uh, seeing no other uh, input, uh, then I will declare uh, this uh, public hearing closed. And again, uh, for a reminder for the audience, uh, the next time that this uh, board will address this matter will be next Wednesday, uh, 7 p.m., uh, right here in the back of the auditorium. And uh, everyone and anyone is welcome to attend uh, to listen in to that discussion. So this uh, public hearing is officially closed. And uh, with that, uh, we'll move on uh, with our agenda. <coughs> and uh, that brings us uh, to communications uh, and announcements. And I would ask uh, our clerk um, maybe to be brief with uh, communications and announcements, as the rest of the board. <laughs> The mobile DMV has been canceled for Tuesday, May 28th, due to assessment grievance hearings being held in the auditorium. DMV services will resume again on Tuesday, June 4th. 
uh, the town assessor uh, will be in attendance for the tentative assessment role in the assessor's office on Tuesday, May 18th, I'm sorry, Tuesday, May 16th from 9 to 1, Saturday, May 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you would like to meet with the assessor to talk about your assessment, please call 340-8610. Uh, and also for an appointment time. And lastly, the town Penfield is hosting its annual free rabies clinic on Saturday, June 1st from 10 a.m. to 12 at the Public Works Building, 1607 Jackson Road. Uh, the free rabies vaccination clinic is a service for dogs and cats of Penfield residents. Dogs must be leashed and cats must be in carriers. All pets must be at least three months old. This free clinic is the courtesy of the town of Penfield and Monroe County Department of Health. And for more information, please call me at 340-8629. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. No announcements this evening, Mr. Supervisor. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Messler. Um, I do have a proclamation I'd like to read um, into the record. Uh, we've had a few this evening. Uh, it is National Public Works Week, and I do want to recognize um, Mark DeFrancesco from town staff from the sewer department. Mark has taught me everything I know about sewers, I, more than I care to know. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be brief and, and just kind of summarize this proclamation a little bit. Um, in that uh, the health, safety, and comfort of our community certainly greatly depend on the facilities and services of our national, uh, of our public work systems and programs, such as water, sewer, streets, and highways. The quality and effectiveness of these facilities is, are vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of our public works officials. The efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff public works departments, particularly in the town of Penfield, is materially influenced by the community's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Um, this proclamation um, is signed by Supervisor Tony LaFountain declaring the week of May 19th through 25, 2013 as National Public Works Week in the town of Penfield, calling upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in our public works and to recognize the contributions um, that the public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Again, thank you, Mark, for being here. It's not always the most exciting topic. Um, but uh, thank you again for educating me over the last few years in my capacity as chair of public works. Um, thank you very much. And I will just um, make two reminders um, for announcements. Uh, the town of Penfield is holding a jazz and food rodeo to kick off our amphitheater series. Um, that is on Friday, May 31st from 4.30 to 7 p.m. And also the Dayton's Corner, Corner School Pie Social will be held on Sunday, June 9th from 2 o'clock to 4 p.m. at the Dayton's Corner School. Um, there will be free pony rides, refreshments, and music. Um, that's at the corner, of course, of Creek Street and Plank Road. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Just a couple of items. Uh, Memorial Day celebration will be Monday the 27th uh, here at 1030, right behind the Town Hall and the Amphitheater. Uh, along with the uh, Parade of, uh, of Roses. I would encourage uh, residents uh, to uh, come and partake in this uh, program. Uh, it's been uh, a program that has been growing uh, over the years and uh, a, a very special program. Also that day, uh, town offices uh, will be closed, uh, as well as our library. And then I'd also like to say that uh, tonight uh, we held the, uh, the annual Rite of Silence that uh, took off from our uh, Public Works uh, Department on Jackson Road. Uh, this was the fourth annual here, I think the tenth annual overall, uh, and it's in uh, memory of those uh, family members, loved ones that have been killed uh, while riding a, a bike. And uh, so this uh, has grown, uh, doubled each year, and so in the four years that, uh, that we have had it, uh, I think uh, today, tonight uh, close to 130 bikers uh, left. Uh, the public works uh, facility for a nine mile ride, uh, which uh, took about an hour. And uh, so it was uh, very impressive and uh, certainly would ask, um, make sure that we share the roads uh, with uh, the bikes and uh, our, our vehicles. Um, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The Penfield Recreation's June Walking Challenge starts soon. To participate in the program, stop by the Penfield Rec Department and pick up the walking challenge packets prior to June 1st. Record your steps every day for the month of June. For complete details, please visit the website penfieldrec.org. Thank you. Thank you. 
I have two announcements. Um, earlier, the PBA announced their golf tournament. Well, we have, there's another golf tournament coming up uh, before that in June, and that's the Penfield Rotary Golf Tournament. That takes place Monday, June 3rd at Shadow Lake Golf Club. Lunch will be at 11 a.m. The shotgun starts at 12.30, followed by dinner at 6. To register or get more information, please visit penfieldrotary.org. And my other announcement is that next Tuesday is my monthly community chat from 5.30 to 7 on May 21st in the new book area at the library if you'd like to come and talk about any issues of concern. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Horowitz? Nothing further good. today. All right, great. Move on to public participation. Two opportunities, uh, this one right here and one at the end of the meeting. And uh, is there anyone that would like to address the board on any matter? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, additions and deletions uh, to the agenda, please. Mr. Supervisor, I have two additions that I'd like to set forth before this board. Uh, first is Resolution 128, entitled Authorization to Maintain Properties and Access to the Charge to, Pro to 2014 Property Tax Bills. And then Resolution 129, entitled Setting a Public Hearing for a Conditional Use Permit to allow the sale of concessions on Arondequoit Bay based from 1350 Empire Boulevard, Ryan Chapel. Thank I, you. I Thank second you. those additions. It's been moved and seconded. Those two items will be added as new business items. Move on to minutes, uh, approval of the minutes. We have the April 17, 2013 minutes uh, before us. Like Would I entertain <laughs> a motion of approval, please? <laughs> We're so anxious tonight after that long um, beginning. I'd like to move that the minutes of April 17th be approved. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, a roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Petitions. Uh, has the board uh, clerk or attorney received any petitions since our last uh, meeting? Seeing none, we'll move on to resolution by function, please. Authorization for MRB Group PC to provide final des design and engineering service relating to <coughs> installation of sanitary sewers within the Parkview Drive, White Village Drive area. Moved. Second. Whereas the town board, through an informal resident survey, public information meetings, and correspondence, is aware of a significant level of resident support for the construction of sanitary sewers within the Parkview, White Village Drive area. Whereas the town board, based on its indication of support, did decide to initiate a formal petition process to accurately document this level of support for such a project and comply with New York State town law. Whereas the petition contains a detailed description of the project and incorporated by reference map plan and engineering report that is on file with the town clerk's office. Whereas the town board having this petition containing signatures of resident owners in excess of 51% required and also representing more than 51% of the total assessed value of the proposed extension and seeing that number and seeing that numbers continue to grow is now prepared to move ahead with final engineering and design for the project whereas provided in the proposal dated 11/13/2012 from the MRB group, the total professional engineering services for this project is proposed to be $189,000, including planning, district formation, survey mapping, design bidding, and construction administration. Whereas the town board resolution 13T-079 previously authorized MRB group to undertake the first phase of this work in an amount not to exceed $8,000 to prepare map plan, engineering report, and to support the petition process. Whereas based on the original engineering proposal, less previously author, I'm sorry, based on the original engineering proposal, less previous authorization, the remaining amount of professional engineering services to complete the project is an amount not to exceed $181,000. Now therefore be it resolved that based on the demonstrated level of support and desire to continue the support this project through required engineering and design services, the town, of Pe town board hereby authorizes MRB group to provide the remaining professional engineering service as based on their proposal dated 11-13-2012, less the previously authorized first phase in an amount not to exceed $181,000. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion. 
Seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Abstain. Four ayes and one abstention. Authorization for release of a portion of drainage easement at 6 Bainbridge Lane. Moved. Second. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Penfield hereby authorizes the Supervisor to sign a release of easement to permit the release of a portion of existing drainage inspection easement at 6 Bainbridge Lane is shown on an instrument survey map prepared by James Zirkel dated August 26, 2010. As the applicant would like to construct a pool shed adjacent to said easement and a portion of the proposed pool house will encroach into said easement in an area that does not affect the town's ability to inspect the private stormwater control facility situated on it. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? See no discussion. Roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. The Fountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Authorized Bond Council and Financial Consultant to finance the Parkview White Village Area Sewer Construction Project. Moved. Second. Whereas the Town of Penfield is in need of financial consulting services and assistance from Bond Council in conjunction with the proposed borrowing of up to $2.4 million for the Parkview White Village Area Sewer Construction Project in the Consolidated Sewer District. Be it resolved that the Town Board accept the proposal from Bernard Donegan as of May 8, 2013 for an amount not to exceed $35,000. Be it resolved that the Town Board accept the proposal from Timothy McGill, Attorney at Law, as of May 8, 2013 for an amount not to exceed $25,000. Be it further resolved that the Supervisor be authorized to enter into a contract for these services subject to legal review by the Town Attorney Funding for these services will be reimbursed by the proposed borrowing of these funds during 2013 and 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? <clears throat> Seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Setting a joint public information meeting for the consideration of the development of 33 single family attached homes and two apartment buildings with a total of 36 units on 32.67 plus or minus acres pursuant to New York State Town Law 278 at 1185 Empire Boulevard, 1211 Empire Boulevard, and 41 Woodhaven Drive. Moved. Second. Whereas Robert Winan, on behalf of Midlakes Development and Construction, LTD, requests an informal discussion with the Town Board and Planning Board regarding the possible construction of 33 single-family attached homes and two apartment buildings with a total of 36 units on 32.67 acres. The parcel located at 1185 Empire Boulevard, 1211 Empire Boulevard, and 41 Woodhaven Drive. The property is owned by Howitt Bayview LLC and is zoned LLD and R120. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Mr. Supervisor, just real quickly, I'd just like to add that the, uh, read a little bit additional uh, information on this resolution that I failed to include earlier. Sure thing. Um, as a part of this resolution, before resolved that the Town Board and the Town Planning Board of said Penfield shall hold a joint public informational meeting at the Town Hall at, on June 5th, 2013 at 7.30 p.m. on said date to consider the said conceptual plan and to hear all persons interested on the question of the possible construction of these units. Thank you. Okay. And that was uh, referenced uh, Resolution 124. I, I apologize for my error on that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, that has been voted on. We'll move on to uh, 125, please. Authorization for town supervisor to sign contracts for town rabies clinic on June 1, 2013. Moved. Second. Be it resolved that the Town Board authorizes the Town Supervisor to sign the following contracts for the Penfield Rabies Clinic on Saturday, June 1st, 2013, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock p.m. 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Denise Kurtz and Stacy Crippen. Thank you. Discussion? 
Seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Authorization for supervisor to sign recreation contracts. So moved. Second. This authorizes the town supervisor to sign six recreation contracts. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? <clears throat> Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Authorization to adopt update to the Town of Penfield Recreation Department Master Plan. So moved. Second. The Town Board Resolution May 2nd, 2012 authorized the 2007 Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan five-year update. The Master Plan Update Committee and the Recreation Director have reviewed and now recommend the final draft be approved by the Town Board as submitted by the Committee. Therefore, be it resolved that the Penfield Town Board adopts the final Parks and Recreation Comprehensive Master Plan five-year update. All right, thank you. Discussion? Okay, seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Thank you. Is there any old business to come before the board this evening? Seeing none, uh, new business. Uh, we have two new business resolutions. I will ask that uh, resolution 128 please be read. Authorization to maintain properties and assess the charges to the 2014 property tax bills. Moved. Second. Whereas on October 2nd, 1996, the town board of the town of Penfield adopted article 4-4-28 of the Penfield zoning ordinance entitled, entitled property maintenance. Whereas the purpose of Article 4-4-28 of the Zoning Ordinance is to prevent the gradual encroachment of blight, deterioration, unsightliness, property devaluation, to assure that, that all premises within the Town of Penfield are maintained in a manner that will assure health, safety, and the welfare of the general public. Whereas the property owners at 50 Bronston Drive, 54 Bronston Drive, 48 Chippingham Drive, 71 Chippingham Drive, 1800 Clark Road, 81 Kyle Drive, 9 Meadowview Drive, 11 Meadowview Drive, 11 Meadowlark Drive, 5 Renwick Run, and 140 Timberbrook Run, or Timberbrook Lane, have failed to maintain the lawns and exterior areas at subject properties, which continues to become a concern for health safety and the welfare of the surrounding. Whereas the town staff has continually requested the property owners to maintain these locations with no result. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Penfield hereby authorize the Fire Marshal and Building, Zoning, and Code Compliance Supervisor to have the properties properly maintained. Be it further resolved that the Town Board further authorizes the cost of said maintenance and any necessary subsequent maintenance during the 2013 season be charged to the 2014 property tax bill of the subject properties. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Setting a public hearing for a conditional use permit to allow the sale of concessions on Arondequate Bay based from 1350 Empire Boulevard. Moved. Second. Whereas an application has been received by the Penfield Town Board for the issuance of a conditional use permit pursuant to Article 3-3-94 of the Code to allow the sale of concessions on Arondequoit Bay based from 1350 Empire Boulevard in the LaSalle Landing Development Zoning District. Therefore, be it resolved that the Penfield Town Board is best suited to act as lead agency um, within the meaning of the State Environmental Quality Review Act known as SEEKER. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Penfield shall hold a public hearing at the Penfield Town Hall, 3100 Atlantic Avenue, on June 5th, 2013, at 7.30 p.m., on said date, to consider the said application and to hear all persons interested on the question of the issuance of a conditional use permit to allow the sale of concessions on Arondequoit Bay, based from 1350 Empire Boulevard in the LaSalle Landing Zoning District. Thank you. Discussion. Seeing none, a roll call vote, please. Cole? Aye. LaFountain? Aye. Metzler? 
Aye. Moore? Aye. Quinn? Aye. Five ayes. Thank you. This brings us to our second uh, public participation of the evening. Is there anyone uh, that would like to address the board on any matter? Ed Linskoog. Uh, welcome, Ed. Good evening, Ed Linskoog, 18 High School Drive. Just a couple of items from the Trails Committee. Uh, the trail under Route 286 that we've uh, talked to the town board previously, but we haven't any action. And we continue to, re to get requests to fix the trail under the bridge so that people don't fall into the creek. It seems to be getting a lot of use. And it certainly is, would be a safety hazard if people had to cross the road instead of going under the bridge where they do now. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the next course of action is. I know it'll be a discussion item at our next trails committee meeting. So okay. we see if we can accommodate some of our residents. Uh, the other item was uh, Harris Whalen Park. It seems that the trails get excessive use up there and they become wider, uh, debris, vandalism. Uh, we would encourage uh, school districts that have cross-country meets there to encourage their people to stay on the trails so that uh, the park doesn't become overused and shabby looking. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ed. When's your, uh, for the record, when's your next uh, Trails Committee meeting? It would be the first Tuesday in June. Okay. Thank you. At uh, 5 o'clock at the community center. June 4th. June 4th. Okay, June 4th. Yeah, I didn't have a calendar in front of me. Okay. And thanks for the tote in Shuffleburger Park. I'll see that it get used. Great. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. And thank you for bringing that to our attention. Is there anyone else in the audience that uh, would like to address the board on any matter? Uh, seeing none and seeing no uh, further business to come before the board, um, I will officially adjourn this uh, town board meeting of May 15th, uh, 2013, and uh, wish everyone a good evening. Uh, thank you, PCTV.